And so as time goes on, every day the student goes to the teacher for what is called Sun Zen. Sun Zen means studying Zen. And he has to, to present a satisfactory answer to the koan. Now Sun Zen is the moment in the monastery when no holes are barred. Although there's a very formal approach to it. The monk has to stop outside the uh, master's quarters and uh, make this mokugyo. He does that three times. And at a signal from the master, which is ringing a bell in reply, he goes in and sits down in front of the master and bows right down to the floor and then sits up and he repeats the koan that he's been given and he's supposed to answer it. Now the master, if he's not satisfied with the answer, may simply ring his bell, which means interview over, nothing doing. Or if he's still not satisfied, he may try to do something to hint the student as to which way to go or puzzle him further, some sort of comment. But what happens is this. Do you see what kind of a situation has been set up here? The student is really being asked to be absolutely genuine. So if I said to you, now don't be self-conscious. <laughs> I want you to be perfectly sincere. And as a matter of fact, I'm a mind reader. And I know whether you're being sincere or not. I can see right down to that last little wiggly guzzle in the back of your mind. And if you think I can, you see, I'm putting you in a double bind. I'm commanding you to be genuine. How can you possibly do that on command? Especially when the person you're confronted with is a father figure, an authority figure. And in Japan, the sensei, the teacher, is even a more authoritative figure than one's father, which is saying a lot. But you are being asked in the presence of this tiger to be completely spontaneous. Or it isn't, it isn't put in that way, you see, though. I mean, I'm describing this from the standpoint of a psychologist observing what's going on here. No, the thing you've got to do is you've got to hear the sound of one hand. And as your answers become more and more rejected, you get more and more desperate. And there is built up the state that is called the great doubt. The students do everything, you know. They've read all the old Zen stories and they come in with the pieces of rock and wood and they try and hit the teacher. They, uh, they do everything they get. And no nothing, nothing will do. I remember I had a friend studying in Kyoto and uh, on the way to the master's quarters who passed through a lovely garden with a pool and he saw a bullfrog in the garden. And he grabbed this bullfrog. They're very tame in Japan. Nobody eats them. And put it in the sleeve of his kimono. And when he got in to give an answer to his koan, he produced the bullfrog. <laughs> and the master shook his head and said, mm -mm, too intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> of course, he meant not so much what we mean by intellectual, but too contrived too premeditated. You know, you're just copying other people's Zen antics. And that's something you just can't get away with. Well, there does come a critical point of total desperation. And when the student reaches that point, the teacher really starts encouraging him. He says, now, come on. You're getting warm, but you must die, be ready to die for this. You must, uh, students have even been put under 
the, in the, into the position that if they don't get it in so many days, they're going to commit suicide. And they have to stimulate this intense period, a thing called obsession. Don't confuse the word session with the English session. Session means studying or observation of the shin, the heart, the mind, the heart mind. And at this time, they only sleep four hours a night. And they meditate solidly all through the day. They go for the Sun Zen interview twice a day, every one of them. And it's a tremendous workout and will last about five days, five or six days. And in that period, the pressure is really on. Everybody is worked into a pitch of this kind of psychic fury that they have to get this thing answered. There's a man in Japan today who has a five days in uh, system, and he practically guarantees that you will have Satori in his five days. I've just got a book about it written by a British. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. Well, I had a, uh, someone I knew of who was over studying Zen on a Fulbright ground. And the grant was winding up, and he still hadn't got the sound of one hand. He said to the master, look, a grant's running out, and I can't stay here. And I've just got to get this thing. So just the day before he left, he suddenly realized that there was nothing to realize. And that was it. You know, here he had spent his whole life thinking that there's something deficient in me. See, there's something wrong. Something I ought to find out to, to get this problem of life cleaned up. Well, you know what you do. Uh, Rinzai, the old Chinese master, said, Zen teaching is like using an empty fist to deceive a child, or like trying to stop a child crying by giving it a yellow leaf. See, the child wants gold, and so you give it an autumn leaf and say, dear darling, there's some gold, <laughs> be all right. Or with your closed fist, you say, what have I got here? And the child comes and tries to see and pull your fingers open, then you hide it behind your back and under your leg and behind the chair. The child gets absolutely fascinated. The longer you keep this up, the more the child is sure there's something real goody inside the, the hand. And then at the end, psst, nothing. And that's Zen. <laughs>